In today's video, we're going to learn how to create custom morphs for our clothing inside our studio using Blender. So here we have my character from the story Tiger Dragon The Rebirth. And if you're not reading my story, you really should be. Uh, link in the description down below for that. All the latest pages on my story are now on Instagram and our webtoons. Uh, so make sure to check out that story and support me and have a look at that story and see what I'm doing with the characters and see how the story is going and find out what a tiger dragon is. So here you can see my character Yamir. We have an issue with the clothing. We have multiple layers of clothing. So if I hide this jacket here, you'll see we've got a shirt underneath. We've got the trousers. We've got some issues here with the boots as well, the footwear. And we've got this wrist uh, issue, wrist uh bandage here as well if you find the story you'll understand why she has that wrist bandage uh, so don't forget to check out the story link in the description down below when i put this jacket back on you can see we have an issue so there are multiple ways to resolve this we could use um, smoothing modifiers we could use collision detection those don't always work as well so these settings here when we go to general in the parameter settings uh, we go to the smoothing we could change the smoothing increase the smoothing iterations we can increase the we can increase the collision iterations that doesn't always work unfortunately so those are some options that you could use they don't always work and obviously you can use this the push modifier but the only problem with the push modifier is it makes it the object the clothing look very thick and very big and it's not ideal in all situations so that only leaves us with one other option which is to create our own custom morphs but you're probably thinking palmy don't these um, clothing come with custom morphs? Yes, they do. So when we go to the parameters actor here, you can see all the custom morphs associated with this slim fit jacket. Now, unfortunately, not all these morphs are going to be customized to what you need it for, for your specific, uh, for your specific need. For example, as you can see here, I've got this uh, wrist bandage here, but there is no morph here that's going to fix that. So I need to create that myself. And this is the reason why we're doing this is because you'll have times and instances where you are trying to create this character and this, there won't be a morph here that's available to for your specific situation. Like here, you need to create your own. So that's why we're learning how to do this to make the most of the content library inside Dash Studio. So let's actually create our own morph. So the first thing we need to do is export our character. But before we export our character and export uh, all the items required to do all the cool morphing inside Blender, we need to realize two things. First of all, your character needs to be in the zero position. So it needs to be in the zero pose, which is the zero pose here, the A pose. If you're doing a generation uh, Gen 8 character, if you're using a Gen 3 character, it needs to be in the T pose, okay? So it must be in that neutral pose. That's number one. Number two, make sure your character is in the zero axis position. So zero X, zero Y, zero Z. So you can see here, zero, zero, zero. Uh, sorry, click on my character first. There we go. Uh, zero X, zero on the translate, uh, X translate, zero on the Y, zero on the Z. You must have them in a the neutral position with the neutral uh, axes. Okay, once you've done that, now we can start to think about how to export everything. So. The first, the next thing we need to do is our item that we're concerned with is a jacket. So remember what we need to do as in the previous tutorial, we need to change the jacket to uh, resolution to base. Okay, so we need to change to base. So we go here to general and resolution level here for the jacket is going to change it to base. Okay, you can't have it as high resolution. Once you import the morph, you can change it back to high resolution. No problem with that. Cool. So base level, that's cool because the question, the object or the clothing that we're going to morph is the jacket. That's the reason why we're changing to base. So I'm going to hide that, okay, because I don't want to export that together with our base here. Since, for example, with this, with our character here, with all the clothing, we want to export that separately because that's what we're going to uh, morph. So also I'm going to hide the hair so I can see the back. We don't need the hair so I can see the back where the jacket is. Uh, if the hair is covering it, I can't see that. So that is good. So that is exactly what I want. So basically anything that's visible here in the C tab is what will be exported. Okay, so this is cool. This is going to be our base. Okay, so this is what we're going to export. So uh, we're going to go to file now. We're going to go to export. Um, I've already got Ayami here. I will just save over that. So save. Yes, I want to save over it. Okay, so the export settings are exactly the same export settings that are used 
in the previous morphing tutorial that I did. I'll put the link up here if you want to watch that. But I'll go through the settings very quickly for you guys that don't know what settings are. It's very straightforward. Uh, we're going to use the Dash Studio setting here. Do not use the Blender setting here. This does not work. Um, it is broken, so do not use that. We're going to use the Dash Studio setting here. And all I did was use the Dash Studio setting and change the scale to 1%. And then I saved it as a preset, which is this Blender export preset here. That's all I did. Okay. Very easy, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, do accept. Cool. It's saving that. It might take a while because obviously um, we are saving the whole geometry, uh, including all the clothing here as well as the actual figure. Cool. So the next thing we need to do is we need to do the reverse now. So we need to hide everything and just have our jacket available. So let's hide our character. Let's hide all the clothing, the eyebrows, uh, the top, the footwear, the jeans, and the palm there, the bandage. And then we just need to uh, make our slim fit jacket visible. Cool. There we go. So only thing that's going to be exported is the jacket now. That's the only thing visible. Don't worry about the hip joint. It's not going to, um, you know, export the bones. So don't worry about that. So again, file export. Uh, X fashion slim fit jacket. I'm going to save over that. I do yes. Again, the same settings. We're not changing anything except. Cool. That's done. Really easy peasy. Now let's go into Blender and we will do this custom morphing in there. So here we are in Blender. I'm using version 2.83.2. This has been a slight update since the last tutorial that I did. Not much has changed. Everything is more or less the same. I think there's been a, a few tweaks under the hood. So I'm going to go through this process very slowly because I really want you to understand how to do this and make the best use of this because I really want you to make the best use of content library inside Dash Studio uh, because buying clothing all the time is not really great for your bank balance. So that's what I want to do. I want you to make sure to get the best, the most out of this tutorial. So I'm going to click anywhere in the viewport to get rid of this uh, little splash breeze here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove this cube. So click on the cube, press delete on the keyboard that's gone away. So now let's import our base, our character, so Ayame. So file, import, wavefront OBJ. All right, so I'm gonna go to where I saved it. So here it is, Ayame OBJ. Now the settings we're gonna use, are, I've got my presets here, Daz to Blender. These are the exact same settings that I used in that previous tutorial, but I'll go through it very quickly again. So these settings are basically this. Um, Keep vert order is selected and polygroups is ticked. That's it. And all I did is press plus and save it as a preset. That's all I did. Very easy peasy. You can do that yourself. Okay. Import the OBJ. Might take a while to import because it's a bigger file. So just wait for that to import. Just give it a second for Blender to think. All right, cool. So we can use our middle mouse uh, wheel button, click on it and I can navigate around. I can zoom in and out using the mouse. Uh, wheel mass and I can use shift and the middle mass button press to kind of move around. So there we go. Okay. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Cool. So now, now let's import our jacket. So file import wavefront OBJ, uh, OBJ for the slim fit jacket. Again, we're using the same presets. So again, nothing's changed. Key vert order, tick the polygroups, import. There we go. So this is the reason why we have them separately If we can see the issues we're having so we can address those issues. Really cool. Okay. So at the moment, there's a, a line around our um, jacket here. I need to click on my jacket first to tell Blender like, hey, this is the object we are interested in uh, to manipulate, to uh, morph. So click on our jacket. There we go. Now you can see there's an orange outline, which means we have selected this item. We're going to be working on this item. Blender knows, hey, I'm working on this item. Cool. So let's have a look around here, our thought process. Okay, so we can see that um, we have got um, quite lucky actually um, that we have got some issues here. So here we can see it's mirrored, the same issue on the left, we have the same issue on the right, really cool. So we can actually use a symmetry function for our sculpting to pull out some of that geometry to fit in that issue there. So we can use um, our uh, symmetry mode for this, mirror mode. Excellent. And we can use some symmetry here as well. Okay. Obviously when I'm going to resolve this issue here with the wrist, I'm going to turn symmetry, symmetry off because we don't have that issue on the right here. Okay. So let's go on to here. It's an object mode and go to sculpting mode. 
okay? And we're gonna use the first tool, the draw tool. Really easy this is. The draw tool is probably one of the easiest tools you need to use. So here we've got the symmetry function, so x symmetry, which is exactly what I'm mirroring. And so whatever I do to the left will be done to the right, as you can see. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. I'm gonna use shift. Okay, I'm gonna just, just go around here, okay. So all, here you can see with our brush here, our uh, sculpting brush here, the draw one, you can see there's an inner circle, which is where the yellow kind of marker is. That yellow marker is actually my um, uh, pointer, so you can see it. That inner circle is the main part, then you got the outer circle, which is the fall off area, okay? So I'm gonna, I can use the keys, uh, the bracket keys to um, increase and decrease these on the keyboard, that's the shortcuts. Uh, basically, we're just increasing and decreasing the radius, as you can see. So by me using the bracket keys on the key on the keyboard, I can just use as a shortcut. So let's go and uh, bring this geometry out. So all I'm doing is left clicking. That's all I'm doing, left clicking. I'm bringing the geometry out, and obviously because we've got symmetry on, whatever I'm doing to the left is happening to the right, and because we got the same issue on the left and the right, this is making um, easy work for me to do. So as you can see, it's basically reducing my work. Uh, because it's got symmetry there. So let me just do this really quickly. Obviously, when you're doing your morphs, take uh, take more time. Uh, don't rush like I'm rushing here. You know, be very meticulous with how you're doing this. So there we go. obviously, the bigger brush you have, the more radius, the more um, it's going to do the drawing there. The more it's going to pull out that mesh. Okay. I think that looks good. All right. Happy with that. All right. So let's go to the back here. So we have some symmetry here as well, so we can sort that out as well. Uh, just there. All right. For this bit here, I'm still going to leave symmetry on, so I can just make short work of that. Cool. Okay, now I'm going to turn off symmetry. So I'm going to turn off the X here. And now it's going to not do any symmetrical, uh, no mirroring. So anything I do to the left won't be done to the right. And the reason why I want to do that is because this, this is just basically all over the place now. So I'm just going to... Do this very quickly. I'm just going to actually increase that. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. As you can see, when we're using the draw brush, uh, the draw sculpting tool rather, is you can see it's pulling out the geometry. So if I click here, you can see I'm doing it. And if I can turn it around the screen so you can see, uh, let me just turn it around. There we go. You can see that. It's pulling it out. Now, if you made a mistake, say, oh, you know what? I made a mistake. You can use Control and Z to go back a few. Okay. I think it goes back to 10 steps back. I think it goes. So Control and Z to undo the previous thing. You say, oh, I don't like that. There you go. Okay. Um, again, we can just finish this off here. Let me just use tool here. I'm just going to just decrease that so I don't hit the color by accident. There we go. So that's pretty good. Okay. We have some further issues here by the... Crease, so the crease uh, where the joints meet, meet is normally where the problem. You have a quite a lot of problems here. Okay. Let me see if I increase this. There we go. There we go, okay. Probably should have had symmetry on because that would have resolved both sides. Okay. Okay, that looks good. Okay, that looks good. Let me just zoom out. There we go. All right, so let's address this here. Since I've got symmetry off already, that's fine. So let's uh, let's address this area here. So what I'm going to do is just see what the issue is. If I hide my character, I can see how much I need to do. So I need to do Optivere. Bring my character back. Okay, so let's do that now. So again, I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, as you can see, it's very easy to do. We're only using one tool here, really. Um, I will show you how to use other tools very briefly. So let me just do this. Okay, a bit more here. That looks pretty good. Okay, so for example, if I carry down going, you know, like if I just went a bit crazy, you can see there's like a huge lump there now. So how can I do this? Obviously, I can use Control Z to do that, or I can use the control key and click on my mouse, uh, click on my left mouse button. And what that does, it is the reverse. So instead of 
creating or pushing the mesh, it pushes it back down. So it does the reverse. So control does the reverse. So you can see here, for example, if I actually zoom in, you can see better. There we go. Control, I've got control press now. And I'm losing my left mouse. But as you can see, it's taking the mesh away. Okay, it's reducing it. So that's what control does. All right, there we go. Just gotta do that. There we go, I'm happy with that. Not too happy with that lump there, actually. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, a bit more lumpy than I wanted it. So you can get really specific on how you want to create this, uh, these morphs. Cool, I think that will do. Maybe I should add a bit more here. There we go. I don't think most people will notice that. That looks kind of cool. Okay, so we we have uh, resolved our issues there. I can't see anything else. There's something there. So again, you have to be very meticulous. No, that's just, that's fine. That is fine. Okay, that looks pretty good. Put something there. Okay, so let's say we're happy with that. I've sorted out the, the poking there, really cool. So now let's export uh, our jacket. So we're gonna go to file, we're gonna go to export, Wavefront OBJ, okay. Uh, I'm gonna save it here. I think I called it Ayami Fit Jacket. I'm gonna call it Ayami Fit Jacket 2 because I've got another morph there. Okay, and the settings are, which I've already saved as a preset. So let's go through these settings if you wanna see. Uh, these are the exact same settings that I use in that other tutorial as well, nothing's changed. So uh, selection only is selected, ticked, objects as OBJ, ticked. Uh, scale is set to 100. And the following uh, options in geometry are selected. Apply modifiers are ticked, write normals, include UVs, write materials, uh, polygroups and vertex order. And all I did was save it as a preset We're using the plus button. And that's why I just use this now. Okay, so those are the exact same settings. Uh, export to OBJ. Just give that a second. Okay, that's exported. So let's go back into Dash Studio now and uh, apply that morph. So here we are in Dash Studio. Let me just get my character back because it looks a bit weird like that. Uh, there we go. There she is. And there's our problem. So with our jacket selected in the scene tab, we're going to go to edit. We're going to go to object, morph loader pro, choose more files. Uh, the settings here, sorry for the morph loader, are exactly the same settings. We're just going to use the Dash Studio presets. Okay, we're not going to change anything there. And we are going to go to choose more files. There's our my morph file I created, Ayami Jacket Fit 2. Um, we need to expand this. Let me just hide these settings so you can see. And um, we need to have reverse deformation set to yes. So right click, yes, and do accept. And there we go, created more successfully, cool. Hit OK. So when we go here to our jacket, we go to morphs here, you will see the army jacket fit too. Apply that morph and voila, it's all fixed. Look at that, look how beautiful that looks. Okay, oh, I missed that something there, oh, missed one there. Okay, so I missed there, I missed uh, an issue there. So I can always go back to my original blender and turn that around and fix that issue, okay wherever that issue is, can't seem to see it there. Uh, maybe if we go, can't seem to see the issue there. Okay, but we can still fix that. Okay, so we can always go back and fix that, not a problem. Uh, as you can see, we have fixed that issue there, so there we go. We have made a use of that morph there. Um, and if I do a little quick, little render there, a little eye ray preview, you can see it looks really good. You would not even know there was any poking or anything like that. As we wait for the quick IRA preview to be done, just give it a second. There we go. There we go. So you can see like it looks like it was always like that to begin with. So that's the power of using morphs. Um, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, so we're going to look at another, another way of creating morphs. So that's great. My character's done. And obviously to save that morph, if I wanted to save that morph, um, I can just go to make sure the item is selected that of the morph we want to save in the scene tab. So my X fashion slim fit jacket is selected. I go to file, save as, support asset, morph asset. Okay. And here you can give your vendor name uh, and the product name and the asset directory, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm going to leave that as it is so you can 
do I want to do there? So the morph in question is actually in the morphs folder, which is here, the morph section. Okay, and it's the um, Ayami Jacket Fit 2, and I do accept. All right, that saved it. So what, hap what will happen now is whenever I use that jacket for another, um, another character, that morph will always be available. So that morph will always be available um, regardless of what character you use. That's the whole point of doing that saving. Now, obviously, if I change the morph of my character now, sorry, if I change the pose of my character, so if I go to poses, uh, not zero poses, and if I just choose something that is really, uh, let's choose something that's really, really pull something. Let's try something like, yeah, let's try something like this. So I'm going to try a pose. What will happen is I think you'll see some poking regardless because obviously this, this morph we created is only for that pose. So you'll see that although this bit is fine, these other areas are not fine here because we obviously we've got some stretching here of these particular areas uh, where the joints are and you'll see that your morph doesn't work. So what we're going to do is look at creating a morph for a particular pose. So let's say you created a pose, uh, you've got your character in a pose and you know, you're, you're happy with that pose, making sure they're in the zero axis, zero position. So zero axis uh, position, obviously with that pose and you're looking at it thinking, oh, that morph that I just created doesn't work with this. Now that's what happens anyway with anything you use inside our studio. You'll apply a morph and you'll be like, well, it doesn't fit properly. And that's the way it will always be. If the vendor spent all the time looking at every more, every pose and creating a morph for that pose, the product would never be released. So this is where we have to use our own initiative uh, to create the particular uh, morphs for that particular pose. So we're going to look at that right now, how we can do that. I'm going to go through the process right now with that. So here we are. We're going to create a morph now for our character here in this position. And we're going to do something really cool with this. So obviously we have some issues here. So let's have a look at this. Let me just hide that there and uh, sort out this. Okay. So here we go. We can see the issue here. We've got the t-shirt coming through the trousers here. Um, obviously you can go to the t-shirt here and we can go to the t-shirt, uh, basic wear t-shirt. There are some uh, morphs there already for the actor. So we can use some of these if we wanted to, uh, but not everything will work in this situation. Like I said, we can say, hey, uh, widen, widen the lower. So we can have the, we can have the, the actual shirt coming out already, which is kind of cool. But we've got this issue here, which could probably be resolved with smoothing. But what we're actually going to do is create a morph where we're going to have our clothing kind of coming down almost like a deforce effect uh, i don't think this t-shirt is deforce friendly so we're going to create a morph that appears to show our um, t-shirt coming down here uh, which is going to be really cool so again i don't want anything uh, applied i don't want any morphs applied remember no morphs it's got to be as it is the t-shirt as it is and we're going to fix that right now so let's uh, do that right now so again the basic wear t-shirt we need to change that resolution to basic uh, sorry to base because that's what we're going to be manipulating morphing so we're going to hide that we're going to export our base like this including the pulse so file export uh i'm just going to save this as i think i've already got something here gen 8 male character with jeans there we go okay i've already got that as well okay we'll call it two okay save again the same blender exports except Cool. And then we need to do the opposite. So again, we want a, a basic uh, wear t-shirt on and we're going to hide everything else. So hide everything else associated with that. File, export, um, basic wear t-shirt. So basic wear t-shirt, which I already seem to have. Again, we'll call this number two. <laughs> Click save. Same export settings, except. All right, so let's go back into Blender and let's uh, do the morphing. Okay, so this is the uh, other one that we just did here. So all I need to do is create a new scene. So I can go here, this new page button here, new scene, and there we go, new scene, cool. So let's import our character, file, import, wavefront, um, Genesis say me, uh, male with jeans, make sure to use the preset, import. Just wait for that to be done. Give it a second. There we go. 
uh, file, import, wavefront obj, and our basic wear mail t shirt. So, again, using the dash to blender preset that I've done, import that. Cool. So, click on our t shirt to tell Blender that we are focused with that. Okay, so we can see our issues here. We need to bring out the t shirt and we need to uh, make it droop as well. Cool. So let's do that. So let's go into our mode here, which is object, and we're going to use sculpt mode. So we're just going to sculpt, use a draw, again, use the draw, the draw sculpt tool um, to bring the t shirt out. So let's do that. Again, I don't need symmetry because I could turn symmetry off here because we don't need that because it's not symmetrical, uh, really. So let's resolve these issues right now. So let's just give some there. We've got some issue here in the armpit, which we always have issues where the joints are, where the armpits are. Um, with clothing, you'll have that. So let's just go ahead and fix that as best as we can. Okay. That looks kind of good. I'm going to use control here to just smoothen that area out. That I don't like. Uh, there we go. Okay, that looks okay. So let's bring out the t-shirt here. Again, I'm doing this very quickly. Obviously, when you're doing yours, take your time with it. You want it to look good. You want your artwork to look good. So take your time doing that. Okay. Right. As you can see, it's very simple to do once you get once you understand how to do it. It's not difficult to do. Um, I think this skill will definitely help you. Uh, to make the most of your the content in your content library, so you don't always have to, you know, go buy new new outfits or anything like that. Um, I really want you to make the most out of the content library that you have, because just like in real life, if you keep buying new clothes all the time, uh, you're gonna run out of money. So yeah. Okay, let's just do this really quickly. I'm gonna just increase the brush here, uh, the radius here, sorry. So we can just speed things up. Cool, that looks good enough. Got a bit of going here. Okay, and probably some here as well. Let me just double check what's happening. Uh, we need a bit more actually, don't we? There we go, I can see it, there we go. Just double check again. Uh, we're missing a bit where the legs are, but that's okay. All right, there we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we've resolved all the poking issues, more or less. Happy with that. Cool. All right, so how do we make the um, shirt droop, so to speak? Because obviously gravity is impacting on it. We want to make it realistic. Um, how can we make shirt droop? What we're going to use for that is we are going to use... Um, the edit mode so over here we've got the edit mode okay now don't let this scare you this looks really scary when you first do it it's not as scary as you think uh, it's quite straightforward believe it or not so here this just shows us all the like mesh of the the geometry of the the shirt that's all it is what we're going to use we're going to use something called proportional editing and all that is all you need to do to activate proportional editing is this button here so when i click this button proportional editing is on that's all we need to do really simple really straightforward okay so the next thing i need to do is pick an area where where i want to uh pull that particular part of the um, geometry we're literally going to like push it pull it okay so this is different to sculpting sculpting is where you are kind of deforming those particular areas with proportional editing we actually pulling the geometry so what I need to do is select an area here at the bottom, somewhere around about here. It doesn't have to be exact, you know, you can pick any area. So here, all right, you see this like white dot, that's the area I've selected, okay? Now I'm gonna press the G key on my keyboard, which means grab, okay? You'll see this white circle appear. This is the circle of influence. So because it's huge, when I move my mouse, it's gonna move the whole um, T-shirt. You can see, look, it's all moving all over the place. We don't want that. Okay, so we can use our our uh, mouse button, uh, sorry, our middle mouse wheel to reduce that. So I'm gonna just 
you know, reduce that influence. Don't want too much of that. I only want a little bit, a specific area here, okay? Okay, so now you can see we're moving that part of the geometry. How cool is that? Okay, we're really influencing what that looks like. So I'm going to press the escape key because I don't want to make the, those changes formal. So escape. Um, I'm just going to change this around so I can get this in the correct area. All right, I'm going to you can still see that white dot. So we're still going to influence this area. Uh, we're going to press uh, the G tool again. So I'm going to increase the influence a bit more. All right. So this is where we can get really clever. We know we want the, oops, let me just turn that around actually so we can see better. Okay, G tool again, all right. Escape, right, G tool again, right, third time's a charm, okay. So we know we wanna bring it down the geometry. We can be really clever and use the axes inside uh, Blender to our advantage. So instead of me free flowing like this and doing it, uh, you know, trying to get the, the right thing. So if I do like that, for example, um, it doesn't look that great. So what I can do is we use a G tool and we can use the axis. So I think the axis is slightly different inside Blender. So let me just get this right. So Z axis is the up and down. I'm pressing, I'm pressing Z by the way on the keyboard. X will give us the X axis in Blender. Uh, it's, a, it's a slightly different and the Y axis in uh, Blender as well, it's this one here. So we wanna move it down, so we're gonna use Z. I'm gonna increase the field, the influence field, and I'm gonna move it down, okay? So you can see now we're, we're pulling the geometry here. All right, I want a bit more actually. I don't want too much, so actually I don't like the way where that uh, where we're pulling it from. I wanna change that, so I'm gonna change the, influence, uh, the actual geometry from here. I wanna move it from here actually. So again, G, my influence field, oops, G, Z, to tell Blender, I just wanna move it up and down. So if I move it left and right, nothing happens, up and down is what I wanna do. I'm gonna increase the influence field, not too much, because I don't wanna infect, uh, affect all that area. So move it down a bit, something like that maybe. Uh, that looks, yeah, that looks okay. Maybe I can go up here, I do the same, a bit more, Z, Decrease the influence field, actually, sorry, increase the influence field a bit more. So it looks like it's falling down. And that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our object mode and we can have a look at this. So how does that look? That looks pretty decent. Yeah, okay. That's probably how a t-shirt would react with gravity, maybe. Okay, cool, so I'm happy with that. So let's make sure we click our item in the C selection tab here. Um, and I'm gonna export that. So file, export, wait for it to OBJ. And um, we're gonna save it as, save it as falling shirt, falling shirt, I don't know. I'm sure you can think of a better name for your, for your uh, morphs. Okay, so operator preset, make sure it's the DAS one that we have, export. Cool, let's go into uh, DAS Studio. Let's uh, turn everything back on, give them the jeans. Get our character. Basic wear mail, uh, basic wear t-shirt is selected in scene tab. We're gonna go to edit. We're going to object. We're going to more flow to pro. We're gonna choose more files uh, for the shirt. And we're going to apply the reverse deformations to yes, accept. There we go. All right. So let's go to morphs and let's turn it on. And there we go. All right, let's also turn the uh, resolution back up to high resolution and let us do a quick render preview. And let's see how good that looks. There we go. Okay, it looks more realistic now. We've created a morph here. We've fixed the issues here as well. Uh, I don't see any more clipping or any sort of poking. Really good. And our t-shirt looks realistic as well for that pose. So I hope you find this tutorial helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out any more cool videos like this that are going to help you on your journey. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below as well. Let me know what you liked or didn't like about this tutorial. And if you have any more tips that you want to share as well, leave them in the comments down below so you can help out this wonderful community. And having said that, I'll see you in next week's video.